Uh, what are you going to do? We've got a special situation here. You've got music. We're relatively sure that he's going to have a problem leaving the music. Um, if uh, history's been in So, uh, but that's, that's okay because right from the start, we want to. So you want to be mean about it. It's okay, music's done, it's time to work. And the music goes off, that's it. And he can come happily, or he can come mad, or he can come sad, but he is coming to the chair, and he is gonna work. Um, just do that consistently enough, the transitions start becoming less of an issue. Um, if necessary, for instance, occasionally, one out of 10 times, we can't get around those issues, and we have to do some sort of specialty procedure, which would be just practicing transitions over and over. Until he gets used to it, which is pretty obnoxious for, for him. But um, I, doubt, I doubt we'll have to do that. The key is, is you don't feel bad for him because he's settling, you know, he's settling down so easy here um, relative to, to, to most kids that I see. It really is his method of communicating what he is feeling to you. Um, and he'll get over it. It'll be fun. Um, he's, he's settling down just about as quick as I've ever seen it. So, we're just going to do sit down. We know you're going to have a problem with them transitioning. Expect it. Um, like I said, turn the music on. Say, okay, music's done. It's time to work. And escort them over. Um, and just try to deliver the street trumpets. Okay, Brian, we're going to work now. Turn the music off. Come here. Can you see that?
Sit down. No. Sit down. Yeah, that was great. Good job. Give me this finger. Okay. Sit down. No. Sit down. Now, as you work more and more with them, he's going to get a bigger and bigger payoff for those sorts of behavior, behaviors, um, and it will become more and more of a problem. So we just try to eliminate it at, at the outset. Because um, he'll start he'll start being mad when he hasn't seen the radio in a day or two. He'll think about it, and then all of a sudden he'll be doing this. He may not be doing that now, but I guarantee you he will be once you start really upping the amount of time you work with him. Especially if he gets out of work. Now you're seeing like real anger. That was he's he's really angry, which is good. He shouldn't be angry. This is like the first time that some strangers come in and some of you all. It's not it's not bad that he's angry. Any 
other question? Yeah, I can Yeah, I suppose you could. I don't know that he's gonna. Yeah, I don't know whether that will. Oh yeah, he is. He is essentially being reinforced for being quiet that he's getting to stay, which is the real payoff. But he also Exactly. Well, there's not much you can do now to be more reinforcing than what you're doing. That is quite something. Now, sometimes, for instance, I'll answer that in just a second. Sometimes, for instance, we never get a kick quiet. They're crying the whole time we're working with them when we start. And we have to back up to the stage that we just let them up when they, um, the way we get them quiet is we, uh, we let them up when they kind of run out of breath. Because they're quiet, they're quiet for about three or four seconds, and that's when they get to go play. And then that's that's how we build that. Or sometimes when they reduce the amount of screaming. You know, he's not really presenting like that coming in, but I, I sort of get the feeling you're going to have to work through this now or next week. You know, at some point soon, running running a, a pretty intensive program, you're going to have to work through this. So and that that's we might as well just get it out of the way early. And really, the only kids that don't tantrum when we start are kids that are so removed and, and self-stemmed that it's, it doesn't matter that you're there in front of them because they're thinking about their fingers, or thinking about rolling their eyes around. That's very hard to beat. The other 95% fight us. And you kind of look at it like uh, taking a... Uh, uh, five-year-old to school for the first time, what's, what's their response? <laughs> if you've ever taken them. They tantrum. Separation, anxiety, meanwhile the, the kid's on the floor kicking around, tantruming, and it just gets called separation anxiety and no one worries about it. So it's kind of really the, 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 the same sort of thing. It's, it's, you know, one of the first times that he's going to be asked, be required, period, to do something. Hey. Lock sticking. Okay, now I'm going to do one more and then I'm going to let you go. See if I can get them to work through this. <laughs> okay, dude. All right, it's time to work. Come on. Big boy. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. Okay, you are just a champ. You are just a champ. I can't believe it. Sit down. Oh, okay, pretty good, pretty good. Okay. Sit down. A go play. Go see mommy. Yeah, there's your mommy. You can go see her. <laughs> What? <laughs> 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 
you hear him uh, humming to himself. I think he's trying to block you at all. That's okay. As long as he responds to me. Mm -hmm. careful what you ask. Okay, so you see, I mean, I just have to be confident that I'm going to get through that. I, I'm always confident I'm going to get through it. Sooner or later, sometimes it takes four hours, but I get through it. Um, with him, it's relatively easy to, to kind of work through. Um, but you just kind of stick by your guns and eventually he'll, he'll, he'll come around. Oh, so, so what's the... Three and a quarter. So, so what's the goal, your immediate goal right now? What, what are you trying to make him do? You trying to make him sit? I was uh, working on getting him to sit down and not twist. Mm -hmm. um, so, on uh, the, the trial, in that last trial, he sat down straight and he went to look up at me, then twist, and that's the trial I let him go on. And not to focus on that. He didn't turn to that. What's that? He didn't turn to that. He didn't, he didn't turn. He didn't. He didn't. So that, that was the trial when I delivered my strongest reinforcer, which is this. Um, and so it was, um, now, it's all relative, and we're not even gonna get to cover too much of that at this workshop. Um, it is relative to how he's doing. What he was doing there, a day from now, or two days from now, probably is not sufficient to get out of the chair. He's probably gonna have to be working on something new, or you know, do something really, uh, really excellent that maybe he hasn't, he hasn't done, done before, put an extra effort or something like that to get out of the chair. But, but for right now, well, we're just trying to get him calm and relaxed and happy um, by, by modifying that. Um, that. That was good. That's really what I'm shooting for. No! No! Let's see, why do you have to hold him up? No! Do why can't you say you just sit and stand up and then you say, hey, sit down? Because he's uh, struggling with me. If I don't hold him, he's, he's gone. Right. And I don't even want to give him the chance to get away from me because then he's going to get reinforced for trying to get away. If you notice, I, I got him and then I, I sort of took him by the hand. I mean, I'm trying to do as little as I have to do to get him to the chair and, and sitting down. Um, but when, he, when he's here, if I'm not holding him, he's on the floor. He's, he's lifting his legs up and out from under him. Um, almost guaranteed he's on the floor. Um, and that's part of the ambiguity, I think, that is, um, what did you say your name? Mary. Mary. Mm -hmm. like Marissa, I guess. Um, that's part of the ambiguity that I think was um, tying Meredith though. Um, was, it just wasn't, it wasn't concise enough for him. He gets a little bit of wiggle room, and so he tries to take a lot of wiggle room. So, eventually, he'll get to the point that he doesn't, he doesn't try it, he's not testing the wiggle room because he knows there is no wiggle room. Just like any kid sitting in, in a classroom. I mean, you, you can't be doing whatever you want to be doing at, at any moment. You have to sit there. And, I mean, starting relatively early in kindergarten, you have to be sitting down. So when I was holding him, his back was bent. So it wasn't even like I could let him lie and sit in a chair because then he would hit his head. So that's why I was struggling. I didn't know. Well, yeah, he was. He, he, he beat you. Um, when he arched, he, when he was going to arch on me, I just kind of, if you notice, at one point, I just put him in. I, I mean, I didn't give him any wiggle room, but I said, sit down. I gave him the prompt, and I put him down. Um, and then I reinforced him, and I brought him right back up. Um, that, that, that's working through it. Do what you have to do to get the response done. The main thing is the timing. Um, if he gets, I don't know what his threshold is, but at some point, he crosses the threshold, and then he's reinforced for the struggle. Good mommy. No, no, no touching. No touching. You good mommy, okay? No, no touching. Fine, fine. That's not your toy, okay? Don't mind. You know, you know I'm, I'm open to an alternative. I'm definitely open to an alternative. I'm just trying to make this ultimately easy, easier by tomorrow as I can, um, which might be a little rougher to do. Um, but if, if we wanted yeah. to do that, if we wanted to do that, unless, yeah. I'm going to tell you if I think that it's going to cause you more problems. Right. No, yeah, I'm just curious. If I, if I, if but not I, only, you see how he recovered this? No. I mean, he went from being paralyzed from one city to the next one, he's smiling and having a good time. I don't want you to touch it. I don't want you to touch it. Because he's recovering. I'm 
Well, the fact that it recovers quickly almost always indicates that it doesn't need to be doing it in the first place. And when I say doesn't need to be doing it, he's, he's not out of control of it. He is reinforced for it. Not, I'm not saying that in a, in a bad way, most, most kids are. But it has some sort of value that has been reinforced in the past. So it's a behavior that's been built in the past. Because eventually, once he starts it, he probably gets something along the lines of what he wants. Or he gets it enough of the time that it keeps him doing it. Now, he doesn't. The crying doesn't get him out of the chair, period. In this setting, it will not. <coughs> Struggling, crying, whatever, will not. And your attitude is, OK, I'm, I'm, I'm here until 5, <laughs> if, you wait. if you want to sit here with me till 5, that's fine by me. But that, that, that's your problem, not mine. And I guarantee you, you have that attitude, he'll, he'll, he'll straighten right out. <laughs> Eventually, eventually, usually, uh, after after a few weeks or so, it starts to really kick in. I kept saying, "Good job, good job," and I knew I was just to say that. But. That's okay. I mean, you're actually doing really well with your time. That, that's all. The most important thing right here, when 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 he's struggling like that, is the timing. Just the, the timing is not altered by his behavior. In other words, he's he's at, as frequent as the trials will come. At any at any point, does that make sense? So he's the most frequent trials will happen when that behavior is occurring. He can delay them by getting big reinforcers um, by responding well, but that's it. That's the only way it delays the trials. Let him go, let him go, out of the chair. Okay, okay. 
Okay, now why did I tell her to let him go at that moment? Because he sat down on the stage. He sat down, what else happened? He was looking right at him. Attention has now gone to the instructor. That is a very positive behavior. He's sitting straight, he's looking at the instructor. That's what we're trying to reinforce. Um, and you, know, you have your proof that the negative reinforcement is going to be effective with him by the fact that he stops crying almost instantly at getting out of the chair. Mm -hmm. um, that means, means that something negative has, has, has been removed. So, um, but again, that's when you bring him back the next time, that's what I want you to concentrate on. Is at that moment he sits straight and looks at you, you launch him out of the chair. Okay, now just as a safety issue, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this now. Um, as a safety issue, if he's struggling and kind of throwing himself away, you don't want to have him by the wrist or by the hand. Um, there's, there's a slight possibility he would dislocate a shoulder or something. Um, so we, we don't want that to happen. It's a very slight possibility, but it's enough that that's why I get him under the arms because there's no way he's going to there's no way he's going to dislocate his shoulder or anything along those lines if, if I got him by the trunk. Um, and then, uh, just in case this comes up and you decide to uh, uh, expand your reinforcers, um, you notice when he's doing a lot of stuff with his head, kids kids love that. It's always almost always a great reinforcer. Um, when, you, when you when you're moving his head around, though, you move it by the neck and in order to put your your hands so they're on top of his shoulders, and you move his whole body. Back. You notice that's ex exactly what I was doing. I moved him his whole. His neck and his head and his body all travel together. Um, it doesn't come up too often. Occasionally, you'll see someone jerk a kid up. Um, you don't jerk a kid up by the arms because it, it snaps their head back. Um, and I don't want to scare anybody, but I also don't want to see see an injury. Occur. It's very rare that, that any any sort of injury occurs. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of at, at, at all the rough housing is what the kids usually like, as what kids do with each other. Um, we just have to do it. Careful. No one's better than that. I'm not saying can you use this now, Casey? Okay, no, so. okay. After that, also, this is the worst possible circumstance. I mean, in front of a tape recorder, it doesn't get any worse than that. I haven't been sued yet. <laughs> Never, we've never had, we've had injuries before. No, I'm not saying in terms of injuries, I'm just talking in terms of like uh, being in a negative circumstance, the fact oh, right. that it's attached to music, that's what I'm pointing at. It's yeah, most, most injuries are like the kid's running away or something and runs into the wall. Mm -hmm. Just a typical injury the kids get. Usually don't have reinforcement injuries. I've never had. Again. And we'll actually, probably tomorrow, um, we're going to start a reinforcement program. I'm going to have everyone just practice doing reinforcers and we'll go over all the safety issues during, during that time. So I'll have to practice doing some a little bit wilder stuff, but making sure it's safe. Is it 9 to 5 or 9 to 4 or 10 to 5? Didn't feel good when you got to that point. You sat down. It feels like it's not going to end, doesn't it? It always ends. What if on like the second time you try out and sit down? Really what I want is a, a clean dispute trial. Um, there's a lot of other stuff we could be doing, but I just think it's going to be very difficult for you to get a dispute trial. But I, that's not something you go basically. Just 
looking ahead, if he goes that well, the city and the building, what's the next city? Well, at some point tomorrow, once we get once we get um, everyone pretty clean on the discrete trials, we'll start introducing. Uh, you're going to have nonverbal limitation for sure, which yeah, is nonverbal limitation, which is do this, do this, do this, do this, so on. There's there's hundreds of those, um, and uh, it looks like he's going to be fine with that. Let's take a glass pan. Uh, what we're really interested in is his uh, first of all his willingness to comply. Number one, and then building up some endurance with some programs like that. So you don't have to let them go after a few trials so you can get 10, 20, 30 trials out of them. Um, because you're going to need to be able to do 10, 20, 30 trials in order to shape some more difficult behaviors that are coming, um, some more difficult skills that are coming. Um, so you'll have that. Uh, we'll have uh, receptive instructions, so like stand up, sit down, turn around, away, clap, jump, and so on. Uh, we'll probably have a block building program. Uh, my motor, uh, my motor skill. Um, uh, a matching program. Uh, yeah, matching cards. Cards. Yeah. 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 I remember slash. What are you looking for? Um, see those programs though. I don't know whether we'll introduce them or not because he is so able to be disruptive during a, a program like that because he can just sweep the table. And so if he gets in the habit, I'd rather get compliance in other programs first before we try to take out compliance with something where he can win. Mm -hmm. um, and then the same thing would apply, apply to receptive labels where he'll be uh, touching things on the table. Um, if, if compliance is at all an issue, it's going to be upset in that. Lots. Because if he's if he's inclined to to not respond or to give you the business at all, that's where it's going to happen. Because it's so easy. Just he sweeps all the stuff off the table. You have to go get it, and he delays the trial. We have ways around all of that. I'm almost scared. Howdy, Prime. Emma. Emma. Camel, you can just drop this out of the be Great. Mommy will show you something. Pretty much. It's relative to who's working with him. But, but he had done that with you, so I kind of set that as the uh, high benchmark. You know, it's really not that critical. It's just it's kind of a good, it's a good training procedure. Um, we actually want him looking at you a lot without having to tell him to look at you. Okay, why don't you go Ryan, we're gonna go look. Critique. 
Chinese. The main thing, the main thing is not what you say. To tell you the truth, you, you could say it in Chinese, and uh, it would have the same effect. If you're watching. It, it's it's that perception of being free of the program. I just I, I, I just say whatever I say, but if you notice, I lift him up and move him out of the chair real quick, um, so he perceives that very rapidly. And you, I think that was good. Um, maybe maybe we could get a little bit more eye contact. Like right. Yeah, it was, that was that was good. Um, he just went a little too far over to the other side. Um, uh, uh, Kind of looked up at you, but he threw himself in the chair. And that's not, we want to make sure not to reinforce that. So I probably would have gotten, try to get one, uh, he does sit down very gently. It's not, he has the capability of doing that. So, but he throws himself in the chair like that. It's something you can reinforce maybe, but not, not the big reinforcement. It was close to very close. <laughs> Good, that was a good call to let him up on that trial. Um, I, think, I think you just want to work on getting the actual perception of letting him up to happen. Because you kind of missed the opportunity. What was reinforced there was he looked up at you and then he looked down. And then when he looked down, he got let go. So that, technically, that action was reinforced. Um, <laughs> I think he wants more. <laughs> Turn on the uh, answer machine. <laughs> Want to try one more? Sure. <laughs> try. Come work. Come work. Come work. I didn't know what the word was. What the word work is. <laughs> Same thing again. It wasn't a quick enough watch. Okay. Now he's starting to reach into his bag of tricks. Now. Right. Yeah, that was one, and he's he's, he's talking away or making all the noises. And, um, but that's good. I mean, that means it's working. So you just start to get big big behavior changes like that. That means what you're doing is working pretty well. Once he sits down, you say. Like, yeah, okay. Let's pull it on. Let's pull it on. I don't want to. If you. See, 
that's relatively easy to do. I, mean, we, I, I could, in a relatively short amount of time, get him to close his mouth and stop making noise and to look at me and keep his feet quiet and keep his hands quiet and be a good little student for instruction. The problem is, uh, that's always beget more instruction. So we just don't do that. We create with differential reinforcement. We'll settle them down, we'll get them looking, we'll get them sitting quietly, all that with different sort of In other words, there's a bigger payoff when those things happen to be present. What is it? Why is Tom Lake in here? Okay, let's try next. Just as hard on you. 
guarantee you. I mean, I, 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 I absolutely know. It'll be just as hard on you when you start it now or you start it a year or two years or three months, whatever. But, but by that time, can't you be more broken in? He will probably, because of who you are, he will probably give you the same oh, treatment. Almost, almost guaranteed. And then also you have you have the problem of just getting bigger. So you know every every couple of weeks it gets a little bit harder to kind of work through this stuff. You're sorry, at the exact right time. He's, he's not behaving badly. You know? Yes. I mean it's not. This is this is not bad at all. <laughs> this is this is very positive. I do this a lot. I see kids start the program. It's always the hardest part of the program the first couple of days. Um, it's, you know, eventually, I almost guarantee you, uh, parents that, 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 that do the work, eventually they go from what you're describing, and almost everybody describes what you're describing, it hurt, hurts you, to you're kind of like, well, you don't need to be doing this. Like, it just sort of starts, like, you, see, you begin to be less accepting of it. And he may start to respond to that in a positive way. But like say, you know, it's breakfast time or dressing time in the morning or, you know, brushing teeth or going to sleep, eating supper, all these things I would, I would start out by saying, guys, like how long is the whole process going to take? No, you, you're going to have to expand into that. That's too, start with that. No, that's way too subtle to, okay. in other words, the first thing everyone's got to get is delivering a discrete trial, uh, getting him, uh, Responding most of the time, uh, and being able and developing reinforcement control. You're lost without reinforcement control. Um, you will not be able to to work with them. I'm not Are we starting only with the therapists right now, and then working into breakfast and all that? I, so I, right now, I wouldn't be doing it. I would recommend you or any family member to actually do the discrete trials. We should start. Out of work with the therapist? No, as, as, as therapy. Oh, as part of the Still, okay. And what you're asking about is all these all this other time outside of when he's in his work time. Uh, we're not going to do a lot with that right now, if anything. I can't, I can't train you. I can't take the, the length of time it takes to train you to do that without having a firm foundation of discrete trials. What I'm trying to say is, everything starts with discrete trials. Everything starts with the chair work. If you have trouble getting compliance in the chair, you're going to have infinitely more trouble at the dinner table. Just guaranteed. There's just so many more things that he can get his hands on, that he can, he can do to not comply. That's not to say that you don't have effective strategies right now with him at the dinner table. But if you're actually going to bring him under absolute instructional control so that he uses a fork, he uh, drinks nicely, blah, 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 all the things that go along with dinner, I'm going to first have to uh, be able to um, have some down and line just to help him to do the rest of the show. So we should go from techniques we've been using until now for those times. Right. And, and most, most kids pretty, pretty quickly discriminate that mommy is instructor versus mommy is mommy. Almost all kids do that pretty quickly. So you'll be telling us when you I think so. I don't want to say yeah for failure. If you try to take on everything at once, you're, you know, this is hard enough. Just getting this down and gaining compliance in the chair. Um, and then you have all the other things. You have the subtle behavior and uh, the, the possibility of grabbing a plate or whatever and you're just, you'll, you'll, you'll be lost. I would be lost right now. I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't do any of that with him right now. Um, I'd be relatively sure I'd fail. Um, because I haven't gained reliable instructional control. I've maybe made a dent on reinforcement control a little bit, but one twentieth of what I need. In other words, I have been able to, I have been able to reinforce him some, it looks like, because he's smiling and, and so on. And work him through and get him to the point that he's smiling and will respond reliably to me. Uh, 
Um, but I need a lot more of that before I'm going to say, yes, I've gained uh, instructional control. Over them. But if it's any consolation, this is the hardest part. Right now, today, maybe, maybe tomorrow, this is absolutely the hardest part. Let's talk a little bit about what we're doing. Um, a couple, a couple of classic things. Um, saying his name. Don't want to say his name. Um, Don't say listen to Bobby. <laughs> listen to Bobby isn't a classic. <laughs> At least not yet. <laughs> um, we don't want to say his name, and that's a general rule, um, because I don't want him to have to hear a, a cue to get ready for an SD, because. What happens when we do that is, every time a kid hears a cue, that's their cue to turn away or figure out something out of, out of plus you on. Plus, it doesn't happen in the real world. You don't, another kid's not gonna say, hey, Brian, look at this. It's just like, hey, look. So, right from the start, there's never been any, any reason that that, uh, that, there's never been any game like that that's been helpful. Um, and if anything, uh, anecdotally, it looks like it can actually interfere. So, just a good habit, don't say his name. You don't want to say, look, don't want to say his name. Because um, I want all those things to have a different meaning later on. I want his name when it's said to have teeth in it. In other words, it, it's something that, that is important and means something. If he's heard it 500,000 times going into getting him to respond to the way his name is said, it's not going to mean as um, and we don't say look at me because ultimately we figured out that if you read the me book, has everyone read the me book? No me book? Oh, it's the first thing in the me book. It used to be the first thing we did. Look at me. Um, we don't do it anymore until a year or more into the program, if at all. Um, I don't think you're going to need to do it with him because he has really good eye contact. The only thing you can do now is, is damage his eye contact if you're not careful to enforce it. Not right now. I want, I want you to get used to delivering clean SDs. Later on, we'll add the baggage on. Um, it's, not that, it's not that big of a deal now. We'll probably do fine if we use those things. But if you get in the habit of doing it, he gets in the habit of hearing it, and then you're going to do something like pronouns, he's going to have difficulty with it, because every kid has difficulty with it. Um, and you're saying, uh, my notes, please. Um, what he may do, the reason we remove the baggage if you say something like, touch my nose, please. If you uh, go to another country where you speak just a little bit of the language, maybe 2% of the language, 1% of the language, like when I go down to Mexico, I used to speak just a little bit of Spanish. If someone starts talking to me, and uh, like I maybe say something to them in Spanish, something I know how to say, and then they blah, 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 and they start reeling it off in Spanish, I'm going to I'll listen and listen, and what do you listen, what do you hear? <laughs> the words that you know. The word, you're looking for the words that you recognize, right? So what, on a difficult task, what is he going to look for? He's going to look for the words he recognizes. Touch, nose, please. In other words, he's going to automatically, will probably automatically cue to the familiar words and away from the non-familiar words, which happens to be the critical part of the SD, my and your. Does that make sense? So we isolate it right down to my and your. The SDs are my and your. 
just, just to give you an example. And then later on, we had all the baggage. Eventually, the SDs are, hey, did you catch my notes? Well, maybe not here. I guess one's a dude. general, I want that to be the reinforcement. If it's out, I want it to be a reinforcer for having responded. So if it stays on, he's being delivered reinforcement <laughs> as you're working. Right. And so you've got SDs with reinforcers, responses with reinforcers, reinforcers with reinforcers, and you've got a street file. Right. But we're not looking for what is going to be a short-term solution. We are starting right from the start for the long term. Too many short-term solutions totally sabotage your long-term as long-term acquisition. Guaranteed. I mean, this method is the most direct you will, you can possibly do, an ABA or otherwise. It does not come more direct than this. The reason we do it very direct is, or as direct as we do it, as many hours as we do, um, just because that's where all of our data has been for outcome. Um, there's a lot of kids now that have gone through the program, there's thousands um, that, that 
outcome through the program. Uh, the, the high outcome kids, I mean, it's always very direct. Simply because there's not a lot, you know, there's not a ton of time to, you know, if, if we use a lot of strategies to kind of get around non-compliance, or he's got to be more compliant than any three and a half year old, any four year old. Absolutely. For a while, he's going to have to be more compliant than his, his contemporaries. Uh, because he's got to catch up, so he has to learn more in that time. You not only have to get him learning as fast as his contemporaries, but actually faster to catch up. So to reach that goal, he's going to have to be more compliant than another kid his age would be. Um, so our overall goal is to get compliance quickly, but it doesn't always work, number one. Number two, it's not for everybody. Um, roughly 25% of the people we do workshops with, we, we recommend the center-based program. Um, or they, they recommend for themselves. I mean, that, that's all. Um, too intense. So they don't necessarily agree with, with what we're doing. I, that's fine. That, that's, I don't expect everyone to. So I mean, just keep that in mind. I mean, at any time you decide, you know, you're a weird guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, intense meaning for the parents, not just the whole thing. A home-based pro, home home-based pro, home model is the most intense thing. You right, and that's one of the reasons you chose it. For the, it, it, but it's for the most intense for the parents or for the people running. Right, but I'm saying for the kids, probably the same thing. Oh yeah. I think so. Yeah, you know, we're much more of a head-on collision than a kind of work around and finesse the situation. Right, right. Okay. Um, that's all. He wants to try to compete with this song. <laughs> now after, I'm going to have one more person work and then we're going to start a, a, a different program. It's actually something I'm going to implement as a program. Um, we call it the reinforcement program. And basically what it is, you're going to practice reinforcement with them uh, for about two, three minutes straight. Um, something I do at a lot of first time workshops. You just sit them down and you try to entertain them. <laughs> Against the music? No, without the music. Now let me let me talk about this music a little bit because Bobby asked a good question about it. Um, no. She asked if, if can we just work with the music? Uh, you probably could and get away with it right now. It might make things a little bit easier. But um, the reason we wouldn't want to from a, just a pure behavioral perspective. Uh, in some reinforcing form, there's a good chance your reinforcers aren't going to be able to compete with it. Um, and it doesn't have any value as when negative reinforcement's delivered if it's already on. So remember, we're rely relying on negative reinforcement right now is kind of our engine to kind of get things jump-started to where we can use a lot of positive reinforcement. And if this is on, uh, it doesn't have as much reason to get out of the chair um, but also, you've got reinforcement being delivered all throughout every trial, and because you've got an extra component to your trials, you don't have discrete trials. Anymore.
Okay, now before you start, the main thing here will make things easier on you. I mean, you can make your future easier or harder. It will make things easier on you as being as direct as possible. Not mean. If you, when I'm getting them, I mean, it, it's. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about the way that I get them. I mean, he's coming with me, but I'm, I'm not particularly mean about it. In fact, I'm very nice. Okay, it's time to work. I mean, I'm, I'm friendly about it, um, but I'm also very direct about it. No excess language. There's no. There's no negotiation about it. When I say it's time to come over, it's time to come over. Ideally, I hope tomorrow, the next day, or next week, whatever, that my job is much easier because I've set that up right, or because I've uh, I've eliminated that as a possibility. It's kind of like putting a baby down at night um, when, when they're first going into their crib. Um, if you go in. When they're crying, you reinforce them for the crying, the crying increases. Sleeping is not Well, we won't talk about that. Now. But the, the point is, is that the crying gets mom or dad back in the room. Um, so that's the baby's, that becomes the baby's way of communicating. Come back, which you do, which is appropriate for a while with kids. But at some point, you have to let them cry it out. Almost every kid goes through a point where they cry it out in the crib. We, we went through that with, with my son. Oh, he sleeps through the night, huh? Yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. <laughs> say how old? He doesn't cry anymore. <laughs> how old did you let him cry? How long did we let him cry? Uh, we started with the 10-minute rule, and then we did have to go through a verse. And he went for like 30 minutes one night. So we took all the way. Yeah, that's how but my wife does this too, so. Oh my God. No, actually, we don't. We really don't do anything. Like, he should be my dog. He's the biggest behavioral mess I'll ever meet. He doesn't do anything. He has no no way of Now, the thing I want everyone to take away from this weekend will be uh, we don't want to have to like, make things just roll in order for him to have his attention. Um, in other words, you, you, you can feel okay to have a, a little bit slower pace. If you notice when I'm working with him, the pace is when he's, when he's not responding well, it's fast. When he's responding well, it goes very slow. Um, so, so you could slow it down just a little bit. Um, I think it might help you out with discrete trials, otherwise it's good.
joke that I didn't have to learn positive reinforcement to them. <laughs> so that was kind of label when I did. Okay, now, what, what would be your critique there? <laughs> you think that, that, that's, that may be the only critique, is there anything else? The launch could be a little quicker. Um, just to guarantee we're getting negative, we're using our negative reinforcement. Um, that, you know, I may have you practice that tomorrow um, once he settles down a little bit. If we get him settled down, I may have you practice the launch. Um, just to make sure no one launches in the middle of the wall or something. Um, and also, but most importantly, to, to, to be quick with it. Uh, it varies depending on depending on uh, again it varies across kids and across the time they're in the program. Uh, kids were getting ready for school will have a burst of sitting down for a half hour to 45 minutes depending on we usually scope out the school first and whatever the kind of requirement is in school that, that's what we work out to. So different periods of the day they'll get, they'll get longer periods of sitting. Different tasks but longer periods of sitting. Um, you know, if we're working on, on a new skill, it may take a lot of trials to, right. to make it happen, or... Um, we would just like to sit in the chair. What's that? We wouldn't have uh, much of a fine just having to sit in the chair for the entire chair, or the point of the entire amount that we could do in one moment. Um, that would only happen if things were not going well. Or we're working with an older kid that we're getting ready for grade school. Again, that's just this program. We really, we really use negative reinforcement. Plus, right now, you're not working on his play skills. At some point, the main way you work on his play skills and shaping and modifying his play skills is to let him go play. Um, and then we kind of control when you call him back, what happens while he's out playing, uh, he gets reinforced for what he chooses. Um, so it's, it's kind of like the program's still running even when he's up, but it's not, um, we need to have enough opportunity to do that. Uh, typically, uh, I'd say the average kid at the average place in the program gets about 20 trials per program. Within an hour? No, for each program. You might do five, six, seven programs an hour. Sometimes less, sometimes more. Starting out, it's considerably less. We're just trying to get them to work with this. I don't know yet. Um, this alone, if this is all you had, you wouldn't do it much. I mean, you're not going to do it three hours straight. Um, you're going to you're going to have other programs. So you're going to do other things. We're going to do other things. Tomorrow. We may not get to those other programs depending on what happens. We may only get to a few, in which case I'll, I'll re only recommend a few hours a week um, until I see you again. Um, dep depending on what we get to, or I may give you some potential programs that you won't actually run until we have a certain compliance level. Uh, our main objective is to not burn them out, but also give everyone here enough chance, enough hours that they can actually train and learn how to do it. Um, and the only way that happens is just bulk hours. Okay, uh, now what I'd like to do is um, just practice reinforcement a little bit. Right. For those of you that have been in the chair, tends to be a concentration on thinking about what's happening. Oh, he's struggling, or, or oh, he's looking. All these different things that he's doing, thinking about what you're going to do next, how you're going to do it. And there tends to be not much emphasis. I know this just because this is how everyone starts. Um, there's not much emphasis placed on the reinforcement. Um, in other words, you're not taking time with the reinforcement. And what I want to do is, uh, just have everyone practice reinforcement a little bit with them. Um, we're actually going to set that up as a program where for like two minutes straight, every time you work with them, you're just going to sit them down and reinforce them in different ways and practice your reinforcers. It does two things. Number one, it, uh, it lets you practice reinforcement, 
Um, number two, it helps you identify reinforcers, things that might be reinforcing for him in the future. Um, so the key here is, is variability. The reason we do this is uh, everyone starting off has trouble thinking about reinforcement in the context of delivering a discrete trial. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the, the, we're learning this all in fun. He may not enjoy it at first. I have no way of knowing. He may, he may not. Um, he might act like he's hating what you're doing. I don't know. Um, but if you notice, even when he acted like he was hating what I was doing, I kept, I kept doing like the same sorts of things. And he originally came around and started smiling. It wasn't, that I, it wasn't that I lightened up on it or anything. He just wasn't accepting reinforcement from me. It wasn't the specific reinforcers. Um, so I think, uh, you know, I want you to kind of get used to kind of working through that if we can and get him to the place that he starts enjoying some of the things you do. Number one, for him, so you can build a larger report. Number two, for yourself, so you have the confidence that things that you do will actually be, be fun for him um, if, if you give it a chance to stick with it. Uh, it certainly wasn't the case with everything I did, but um, with almost every kid I work with, it's it's the case. They reject almost everything I do at first. I just keep, like for instance, when I was doing this thing, you hey, hey, hey. he really didn't like it when I first started doing that. And then he kind of looked at it, and he came around and he started liking it. When I was doing the thing on his face, I liked it the first time, he started liking it after that. Pounding the bottom of his shoes. Anyone remember when I first pounded the bottom of his shoe? Um, thought it was, a total super freak the first time I did that. Um, but after after a couple of times of doing it, he had a great big smile on his face. Um, so it was just exposure and me kind of sticking with it enough to uh, get to the point that it was actually a reinforcement. Or that he would accept it as a Okay, so um, what we're gonna do. Does it speak to you? Sit down. 
Oh, look at that. He should be doing it on his standing up on his own, standing there, and then sitting down and say some down. Not having to be kind of guided down, not having to be on the up. It's really not hard, I and mean, this should be a relative, this is a perfect skill because this is well within his capability of knowing what he needs to do. Um, but you can see, you got something that's well within his capability of knowing what he needs to do. This should be just a piece of cake for him, and it's still a compliance issue. Um, as opposed to something like verbal imitation or uh, more complicated tasks like um, touching his teeth, let's say. You know, imagine he's tangerine and trying to get him to, to touch his teeth. It just turns into a big mess. So we really want to try to get compliance with, with something like this. Just Uh, yeah, ideally, we'd like to, but we're really not doing this just to get them to sit in the chair. I don't think that'll be a problem. Um, we're doing this, we're doing the sit down because it has a high probability of being a first compliance 
testing. I mean, you can do the other stuff with that in sitting, in standing. I'm just wondering if you. Eventually, yeah, but it, first you want them, we're going to have them sitting down to do most of the other programs. Uh -huh. Just because that's kind of a natural, that's the way learning typically starts. Eventually it goes, a lot of stuff does happen standing up, running around, whatever. Um, but there's no way, I mean, if I try to get uh, uh, control over it or get them to respond to me now by saying I listen to music, I mean, they'll just kind of brush me out of the way. I don't think I'll ever go get around that. Okay, once you go. I think we're just going to do some more, more to sit down. Although he might do it with you. He might be able to do this with me. We could try that, but if he, if he sort of starts losing it with you, then uh, tantruming or, or you know, not trying to get out of the chair, you're uh, probably going to go to the chair. Lift it all the way. You lift it all the way. Okay, good job. Generate a lot of different reinforcers. Really deep, but you know what? Let's not even go down that road. 
Um, but basically what we're doing, a form of operant conditioning, and, and the subject does not need to understand why reinforcement is occurring. It doesn't need to understand the equation in order for the behavior to be changed. It's a common mistake that, that people make. In fact, it's, I see kind of, see longer lasting behavior change when there is no understanding. It'll be similar. This is really sloppy right now. We're, we're between between him struggling and, and you know, trying to train everyone to deliver a free trial. It's 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 real sloppy, but um, same basic thing. SD response, consequence, pause. SD response, consequence, pause. We have all sorts of specialty techniques for pronouns. It's, it's so brutal. Um, but uh, virtually every program in the foreseeable future comes in that format. Gets that format down. You get that format down. You're you're ready to go. We still have to work a lot on the reinforcement. I mean, that's always, I always have to, whenever I work with a kid, I've got to concentrate on my reinforcers. Always, it's not, never comes, never comes easy. Because as soon as you are good at reinforcing a, a, any, any kid you're working with, um, not just you know, your kid, but, but all, all people working with kids, as soon as they become good at reinforcing, they generally satiate the reinforcers they have at work, and then they sort of fade away, and they have to start thinking about coming up with new reinforcers, and it's, this is an ongoing process. At some point, though, you hit a critical mass where you'll see someone that work three hours and not deliver the same reinforcer twice. Um, and they're usually much more resistant to uh, satiation. You look. Okay. Uh, let's get someone else in the chair. Turn up. Okay, don't sing. I have to feel like this, this whole music thing. Like, so, okay, so 
Well, I'll tell you, for the purposes of the workshop tomorrow, I might get rid of it just so we can maybe get through some more stuff. But in general, I would still have the collision with it. I'm doing this. I, I would only avoid it so long. Because if it's not this, it's going to be something else. Um, it will always be something. And this, so this is the perfect. You on the biggest thing ever. Oh, that's perfect, though. Because, see, if you, if, if you can, it's kind of like you can take out the leader. But the best way to defeat your enemy is to take out the leader, right? So you take this out, you, you eliminate it as a problem. Um, other things should not be as much of a problem to eliminate. The goal is to have you sit down, spike the meat. And then to follow your command. Right. So you have, right now, his, his reinforcements all uh, coming from this music. We haven't. Although we're delivering it technically, when we let him go, we're letting him up to the music. Now that that's that's appropriate. Um, but he has a history of this music being disrupted. The only way to going to be to work through that is, or to get through that is to just work him through it. He's going to get used to it. Now I've seen kids, for instance, that uh, could not could, could not do anything if there was food in a bowl on the table. I mean, they're constantly just fighting, me, fighting at me to get to get at the food, you know, running across the room trying to tackle the table and get us the food. Um, exact same procedure there. The food stays out on the table, we work through it. Um, until eventually, I, it's very rare that we ever have to limit access to the food. Because the kids just get the notion of, just like, just like in any classroom, during circle time in preschool, yeah, there's great toys over on over on the shelves, but this is circle time now. You can't be over playing with them. Like, there's no exceptions. There. Same thing for him. Want to try again? Okay. Okay, very direct. All right, I'll try. Don't be to sit down. Don't be wanting to sit down. Okay, sit down. Sit down. She is right behind you. Very good. You sat down like I told you to. Now, sit down. Sit down. Come on, Ephraim. Sit down. Sit down. Okay. Good. 72 so too many words. <laughs> All right, not one word. Sit down. Good. Sit down. Very good. Good time. Sit down, right? Good. Okay, we're we'll going to get in there and reinforce them. Okay. Sit down. Sit, sit. Sit good. Big reinforcement. Yeah, hey, you sit so well. Oh, what a good sitter. That's on my own. Okay, now again, this is relative. What's your name, by the way? Doobie. Doobie, that's right. This is relative to Doobie. Am I saying that right? Yeah, close enough. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, in other words, the reason I'm letting him go here is the struggle reduced at that moment. And so that's what I want to reinforce. I want to reinforce the de escalation. Um, as opposed to, I have a much higher standard for myself working because he's demonstrated a better response for me. But so it's kind of like we want to walk him down to that. I don't want to put you through total or him through, through too much. We want to, uh, that was the best response. That last response was the best response he gave for you, and that's why I told you to work. Now you're having a tendency to use a lot of language. <laughs> Doesn't help. <laughs> By the reinforcement, I shouldn't use that much language. You can use a lot of language in the reinforcement, but you don't want it in the SD. The other thing you don't want to do is rely too much on language. In, in the reinforcement, uh, you can use it, but you just don't want to be relying on it because you, you know, to him, it doesn't, it really may not make that big of a difference. Um, that you're, so it's a waste of effort. It's not a waste of effort. I, I, mean, I don't want to say that because um, I don't want to minimize the importance of language. Um, but you know, little kids, if you really if you really look at what reinforces little kids, and what when little kids, you go look at any three and a half, four year old, and you look at when they're really having a good time, it's almost not, almost never when an adult's talking to them. <laughs> go out of the playground, watch, watch kids out front here. When they're having a good time is when something silly is happening, something wild is happening, something goofy is happening on TV, uh, maybe, maybe something funny, silly is happening in a book. But the point is, it's silly, immature, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. It's not, 
It's not adult language. Um, very rarely when adults speak as a kid, cracking up and having a great time. No matter what the adults say. Does that make sense? Yes. Almost never will you see a kid like really having a great time. And I know I know I sound like a crazy man right now, because obviously he's not having a great time right now. I promise you he will. Almost any time that a kid is having a truly great time and really just loving life, it's not what an adult speaking to. Almost never. It's almost always when another kid's doing something silly, or something wacky on TV, they're doing something silly with toys. That's what we want to get to with our reinforcement. So that if he doesn't know how to do that, or if he doesn't know particular uh, uh, silly things or wrestling or whatever, he's going to learn it in the way that we reinforce him. Another shot? Want to go one more time? That's the one. What? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Sure. We'll see. No. Sit, 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 good. Sit, sit. Right, good. Okay, I'm right. Sit down. Sit down. Good. Right in there. It's very good. Sit down. Very good. Don't wait that long. Just Let's just get into it. Sit down. Very good. I see do a lot of things on their terms. Um, that happens to be something that's in the in the line of you know, maybe it's just doing it because it's on his terms. I'm deciding to do it now. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Um, but our main our main objective here is when we give when we give an SD, he he makes a big effort at a response. Um, right there, he gives an SD. For you to give an SD, and then we get an effort as well. So it's kind of on his. Does that sound familiar? Do you ever feel like he'll do things but on his terms? Yeah. Okay. That's what we have to get around because he can't live life fully on his terms. In fact, for, for a little while he can't live life on his terms at all. Later on, he gets all that back. And if you really think about it, all kids go go through a phase called the terrible twos or whatever. But they go through a phase where everything has to be on their terms. And then just through life, that gets that that, that goes away. It becomes more of a uh, becomes more equal. Some things are on the kids' terms, a lot of things are on the parents' terms. As you go along it becomes on the school's terms and it really becomes on the school's terms. I mean, when you go to school, I mean, right from preschool, I mean, you don't do much that you get to decide exactly how you're going to do it. You, you have a little bit of room, but you, know, you don't get to decide to go out on the playground when everyone else is in circle time. It's just not that. It's not that. All right, so we'll, we'll 86 this tape player for tomorrow. I know this is, seems like a, a long day to keep doing this, but. Brian! It's time to work. Sit down. Excellent! Come. Sit down. Ali, 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 Ali,
quality of his response. You're gonna, we're going to take the best response that he's given today. What percentage of that? Is? I'll put it the other way. Fifty percent, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I'm just taking a guess at it. Yeah, that, that, that's a judgment call. I can't. I, I don't really know either because it's been a while since you've worked with him. So typically you come right back and you have a better idea of where he was the last time you let him go. Um, you should definitely be better than that. Yeah. In terms of to the first time, I, I was saying that okay. Um, I mean, that was actually that, that one long run I had with him. It's because I was just resolute that I was going to get a better response than... He was kidding me. Um, so I stuck him out. He was responding correctly, but I was just sticking him out. And I think that went like 14, 15 trials, or maybe 20 trials. I mean, can he also be tired by now, too? Yeah, he could. But that's not, um, he's got to, you know, right from the start again, we want him to. Mommy, the yellow one. Which yellow one? The button? He can't sit. Okay, go ahead. Right. Just like it's not for us. I wish it was. But everyone would be home napping all the time. Right. But then again, we're adults. Trust me, you have more energy than you do. He owns half a lot of energy. Okay. And Brian, it's time to work. No, no, no! I thought that was a great time to let him go. That was a perfect call. Um, he'd settled down. Um, so and now he gets he gets his music. Um, the other way. Oh yes, that's a good idea. The, the other way. Yeah, show me. Show me the other way. Show me the other way. Okay, initial compliance, I mean just so everyone knows. True compliance can take thousands of trials. I mean, it can take a long time to get to that point that he just understands he has to do it. He's gonna, it's, it's gonna be, uh, or he's, he's been modified. Here's the SD. The best thing to do is just do it. Um, and they can enjoy the reinforcement and so on. But getting to that point often takes a very long time. And um, he's actually making, you know, he's showing spikes ah! of getting there just today. So that's going to get there. I think that's it for him for today. Go ahead. Okay, uh, that's good reinforcement. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do tonight is um, I'll, I'll uh, put together his, his logbook um, and be his initial start set from what I, what I think now to be his initial start set. We're going to work through some of them tomorrow. It's going to be, uh, I don't know necessarily you're going to start them. We're going to probably wait for compliance, but then just sitting down. We might even try another receptive command or receptive instruction, uh, get away from the sit down. Um, but we're going to want to see compliance and simple receptive instruction. Um, the reason for that is uh, we could probably co -work, you know, work around, get him, get him doing some other skills, um, kind of get his interest for a little while, but I almost guarantee it, if you don't get compliance, at some point you fight the battle. So you either fight the battle well, you're working on a skill that is relatively easy to deliver, or you end up fighting the battle in the middle of uh, receptive labeling, which is a nightmare. Um, but you will, you will fight it. Because we, I know that we fight with every kid. You fight it when you start, and you generally fight it again at about 14 to 18 months, with the uh, end of the honeymoon period. <laughs> um, so everything starts going pretty well, and then you kind of hit a big compliance issue again. Um, so, uh, We'll set up uh, criteria for moving on to the compliance at this rate. The whole focus in the beginning would be on yeah. the response to this. Yellow one. Uh, and so typically what we see, and we've actually looked at this through logic, when we move on okay. to a new skill from the old school, we move on to accepted instructions from, uh, say, this skill. And we have 50% compliance. Almost universally, we can expect 20 to 25 percent compliance in receptive instruction in the next the next step of the program. Uh, we might build that up, but then we move it on and get to 60 percent compliance, and then it falls again. The compliance falls, compliance rate falls again. So it's kind of like you get this exponential factor of building non-compliance, which we want to avoid. We want to get one one thing, maybe two things, but one thing solid, and then go from there. We get much more from that on your terms. So he does one thing consistently on your terms. Um, you'll get much more from that guarantee. You'll be further along in three months than you will kind of doing the backdoor ride for everything. I literally bet my house on it. I say that a lot. Someone sometimes someone's going to take that. What's that? setting, it's very easy to think, keep things consistent across people because everyone's seeing other people work with the same kid. It's easy to understand what, uh, 
the way SDs are delivered and, and uh, what exactly is said without paying much attention to the logbook. Although they do need to pay some attention. In a home program, the logbook is critical. And just like with therapy, the uh, logbook skills take time to develop and need to have attention paid to it. Um, because you're not making a record of just of what's happened. You're actually mapping out what needs to happen next for the next person that comes. Um, any, anytime you're, you're making an entry in the log. Um, so, uh, and you need the white the one. The log book will be that each program the that he has. The white one. The white one. Okay, go take a um, And with each divider, this may be a safe proposition. Has the various uh, SDs and how you should respond to each SD. Which I will actually write some of these down for you tonight. Make sure you have the ones that you're going to be starting with. Um, but it has explicit instructions about how the SDs are delivered, uh, what your mastery criteria is, criterion is. Um, so are you 85% uh, across two or three people to say that something's mastered? Sometimes you go lower, sometimes you go higher, depends on the task. That I'll I just give to you, um, depending on what the skill is. Um, prompts and prompt uh, hierarchies, uh, which we're not going to touch right now. Um, and then right here, it goes along with what we were talking about before um, trial by trial data collection percentage. And what that means is uh, we tried to come up with a system that uh, prevented us from getting um, data bound. Um, but also let us collect enough data that we could be sure that we were being accurate. Um, so for many years, we collected trial, every trial wrote down what happened. Um, now we do it roughly between 20 and 40% of the time, depending on the kid. Um, so uh, we prefer the least amount of discrete trial data that is necessary to maintain accuracy across the board. And actually, uh, in our our staffs do better if they get good at anecdotal notes. Um, they go, they move faster, they get more trials done if they're good at anecdotal notes. But it takes months to polish your skills in anecdotal notes. It's a real art of uh, writing down good. In other words, not saying this trial, this happened, this trial, this happened, this trial, this happened. Um, because typically, uh, even if you do that, you still have to write down anecdotally what the, what that that data mean. Um, and that, that's kind of where the art comes in, to it all. Um, now, to answer your question before about how do you maintain the accuracy, um, it's all built into the system so that we can deliver, uh, we, can, we can take anecdotal notes and be relatively sure they're accurate um, by how we deliver the trial. We use um, a particular method of delivery of trials, um, number one, because it's main reason being that it's the highest acquisition uh, available. Something we call expanding trials. I'm going to get to that. We're not even going to get to that this weekend. Um, but I will, we will get to what we call expanding trials. And uh, through that, you should be able to take pretty good anecdotal data. Uh, but we're going to keep polishing that. As I see, uh, just keep polishing and polishing it. And uh, your, your method for, for uh, taking data that doesn't kill you and is very quick. Now, ideally, uh, what we like is, I'm just going to stick to a data sheet. The test is, for a therapist, to know if we have good data or not, is that uh, a therapist can come in having not seen the last three or four programs and know in 15 seconds what to do. They have 15 seconds to look at the data to make a decision about what needs to be done, where the skill is at, where the kid might be having trouble, what to look for. They go longer than 15 seconds. Something's wrong with either uh, the way the therapist is interpreting the data or something's wrong with the way the therapists are taking the data. Um, in other words, I want it that concise. So you want three, four, maybe even five sessions very quickly. Um, so what we do is we break it down into, uh, this is trial by trial data up top. So this would be what the item was that you delivered, correct, incorrect, prompt, and so on. We've got a variety of data sheets. It's just a standard starting data sheet. It could change for any program at any time. But um, it's roughly this format. Um, so you go through and you basically, uh, every single trial, after the trial, you write down what happened. So after the reinforcement occurs, you write down what happened. Um, 
which sounds uh, like the most accurate, productive way of doing things. Uh, we just have had a lot of trouble keeping therapists to be reinforcing while we're doing this. Um, reinforcement usually drops, and we, we fought like crazy to make them stay reinforcing. But uh, whenever trial by trial day, we say you can watch it on films, you can watch it on, you can watch someone working, uh, the reinforcement typically falls off for where we need it for the thousands of trials we need to deliver. Okay, so that's the discrete trial data. Um, it's either correct, incorrect, or prompt. prompt. Trials that you prompt them on, there's, there's a place to mark it down. If he's correct with it, mark it down. Incorrect, mark it down. And down here is your anecdote. It's not much room to write. Um, because the best data is all, is all abbreviated and simple. That's what the target is, what, what it expanded to, uh, at what point the expansion collapsed. Um, because all of that information, I'm not going to explain to you today what that means, but all that information tells the next person exactly where they need to come in. So if I, for instance, expanded something out to, to, uh, to uh, 40 seconds, um, and it fell apart at 40 seconds, uh, the next person will be part of the methodology to come in at 30, 35 seconds. Uh, but we will get to that for each program and how that works across, across programs. Okay, does that make sense? Um, Jonathan's tired. <laughs> Some things will start being thrown at me. Okay, so uh, we've got the cover sheet, like I said. Uh, the next sheet is your item list. Uh, this is actually pretty basic. Uh, it's the target item. So if we're doing receptive instructions, one would be sit down, two would be stand up maybe, three would be clap hands, four would be 